Hey. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry, it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be part of alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh, message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. He's, still, he's talking to Tony right now? To buy our merch, I was. Yeah, but now I'm also messaging the kids. All righty then, dear listener. Here we are. We are back. It is an alliance stream, as you heard in the uh, Type 22, please, if you can if you can hear us well. Uh, this is an alliance stream. It's an alliance of alliances. We got Extreme Underground and... Uh, uh, well, we have the XU Epic Underground and, the and Extreme, un yeah. Extreme Underground coming together to draw forces. <laughs> yes, still listen to my, oh my favorite aspect of the Patreon things. One dollar to gate gets you in. We talked about this over and over and over again. And now, the fruits of their labor. Shout out to Alden. All right, guys, here we go. Um, this is song number one. Neil is not looking forward to going to work, so I want to kind of get moving on this so that Neil doesn't miss any of the uh, songs because he is one of the... He was the main organizer of this night, so I want to make sure that he gets done. He was gets he treated now? well. Shout out to the big homie Chris Campbell. Shout out to Aldine. Okay, guys, here we go. Song number one, is this an XU song or, or a Epic Underground song? Okay, so the first song that we have is Stormkeeper, The Seer. Uh, Stormkeeper is oh, a black metal I band got, from I Denver. Got the, I got the wrong one. Colorado. That com okay, we'll keep talking then. That combines I, I melodic the black metal with symphonic elements and dungeon synth. This band placed very highly in a few polls before winning here, including our AOTY poll. This is from their debut album released last year. The lyrics are here in the A O T Y, like Attack on Titan. Is it a, was it based on Attack on you Titan? You know, I was hoping that you weren't going to ask me that. Why? Because I don't know what it means. <laughs> because they've told us before what that means, and I don't remember. They told you what A O T Y meant? Yeah, we read it in one of the other. I'm, I'm pretty sure we did. We read it in one of the other. Archero, what does A O T Y mean? Just tell us, quickly. So we Quickly. Leave this uncomfortable moment. Why is it uncomfortable? Just I don't, you don't I, know what something means. Well, when album somebody's album of the year, A O. See now you remember them saying it. Album of the year. No. Oh, they did. Pray for me. Uh, Gia has a BTS song stuck in my head, and I can't take it anymore. Oh well. Speaking <laughs> of BTS, uh, I might not be able to help you with that, Miss. There might be some BTS on the way. All right, guys. Song number one. This is from the Extreme Underground. Storm Kellendross is the leader. Oh, oh, Kellendross always comes Storm up. Keep the Seer. The Seer. Okay. Yep. And Storm like I said, Keep... the lyrics are up there if you want them in the in the. Wait, message. you have the lyrics? Yes, I do want the lyrics. You actually. want me to send them to you, or are you gonna? No, pull I them got up? it. I, I'm looking at it right there. Okay. All right, Storm Keep the Seer is song number one. Beautiful people. Oh, honey, time wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me turn that on low. Okay. It's up on. 
She wants to turn it on low. Well, I don't want it to bother you guys, so. Let me well, it's turn not it on low. well. I mean, you're you're prego, so I mean, if you're if you need it. Low will low will get it done, and it won't affect the video quite so much. Okay. Okay. Teruki. No. Shout out to Gary Smith, Semper Fi, my guy. All right, guys, here we go. This this so this one album of the year. Uh, well, he said this band placed very the band placed very highly in a few polls before winning here, including it was in that poll, but it didn't win. Symphonic Elements and Dungeon Synth. I was just talking to people about um, our 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 little the way that we do stuff, and I got to tell you guys. Yep, listen to Slipknot yesterday. It was a big bump. Yada yada yada. I like it. That's great, but. I gotta tell you guys, I love our system because it makes it so that we can still um, make a living but still listen to bands that we've never heard before. And things like Dungeon Synth and things like that, if we did it the regular way, we would just never get to what we need to get to. Uh, so shout out to all the alliances. You're, you're streaming on both the channels and I know, I know. you didn't want to do that. No, I did. I did it on purpose. Okay. I did it on purpose. All right, here we go, guys. Get ready for some Dungeon Synth. From the band store and keep, let's do let's this shit. Go. The seer, let's go. Mm -hmm.
was what's the name of this band again? The name of the band is Stormkeep. Stormkeep. The name Keep, of the song is The, the Seer. Seer. That was <sighs> very was interesting. The name of that that book. Wizard's First Rule, Terry Goodkind. I read three books in that series. Wizard's First Rule, I think, is the first. Uh, he was called The Seeker. I think the series was The Seeker. I don't think anybody knows what I'm talking about, but uh, it was by this guy named Terry Goodkind, and um, the main character... The Sword, Sword of, Truth of Truth series. There it is. The Sword of Truth series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, Neil. Okay. okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. So the Sword of Truth series with Terry Goodkind, Wizard's First Rule, I think was the first one, and you're following this guy. I forgot the name of the the, the, the main character, but he's a wizard, and it turns out he's a he's a war wizard, and I don't want to give spoilers. Like I said, I only read three books. It's funny because it was I was reading that book when I met. Uh, you at that Bible study. For real? And the girl character I always had is you. So I'd read the book and like I just have the girl character because she was like really powerful. Like she she was like whatever and like she didn't take shit from anybody and she was <laughs> she was very mean to the main character at the beginning. Oh. Which is also Richard is the main character, yeah. Yeah. Um and then the, the the bad guy was a really really evil guy, and it just got too it, it, there's too much sexual violence. I, I just stopped reading the book. Oh, I I don't like you know it was, it was too descriptive, and you know I feel like it's hard enough watching it in a show. Yeah, but to have to like read all and the you know my and... you know how my you know how my mind is. So, yeah, so I, yeah. I just I just, I couldn't I I couldn't get past that. I mean I can barely get you know whatever. But yeah. anyway, yeah. Um, it, it like the vibe of the whole thing got me uh, got like it, it's the seer not the seeker the guy's name Richard was the seeker I think in in the book he was I think that was one of his names was the seeker or something like that so not the seer so this is a different different book different universe whatever uh, but it reminded me of that and and you know, but yeah, like I said, like I think the girl's name was like Colin or something, K H A L A N. Hmm. Colin Omnell. I still, it's funny. I don't remember the guy's name. I think it was Richard, but the girl I remembered. But the girl I had, like it was, I had, you know, it was basically you. That's so cute. Um, good kind was an objectivist, and that philosophy got fairly heavy-handed in later books. Yeah, well, I, and I'm sure it was a great series, and I'm sure he did a great job. I just. I couldn't get through it. Shout out to Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne said, how come you're not wearing any Beatles, Beatles shirts? <laughs> oh, well, we've never received any. I said, get me a black John Lennon shirt. I'll rock it for a <laughs> Get me a black one. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're not talking about uh, Richard, but that, that's kind of where it was. Uh, uh, okay. So oh. sonically, this was really interesting because it had, you know, the, the type of vocals I'm not really a giant fan of, but they had Second a Second wave black metal vocals, like, yeah. Yeah, they had a lot of really cool sounds that they added into it, and it just gave it like this, like you felt like you were a part of something that was much bigger, like there was a story going on. Um, it It's weird because when I was reading, unless I'm like not seeing the lyrics, like I'm just seeing like a lot of description, like words that like describe, descriptive words, but I didn't understand a storyline, but it felt like a story was taking place. As the song was playing. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. A wizard, a wanderer, a traveler, circer, searcher, seer, sojourner. To the, see how many like descriptions are just in the first one. Riding through the woods, snow and mountains, plains of lingering frost, wolves and north winds. I remember in school they used to have us um, write a sent Like you had to sometimes take out all the adjectives from a sentence just to see what was left to see how bland the sentence would become that's interesting if you did that in this song that's there would not be much left if you yeah. took out all the adjectives yeah 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 it, well uh daniel pointed this out so did kel that the the lyrics were intelligible like oh yeah you know how sometimes it gets so cookie monsterish or so black metalish that you really don't you can't, you know. You can't make it out. Yeah. They're just, you know, I, I'm not really, I'm not really a fan of that because I focus so much on lyrics. I'm not a fan of like, 
not being able to, to intelligibly hear the words. So I definitely like that. I felt like that's one of the reasons I love Magua so much is they're a black metal band, but yeah. I know exactly what they're saying. That's what I love about them. It's like that clarity because to me, the lyrics are 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 add so much to it because of the it accesses your the t- it turns on the TV in your mind, mm-hmm. right? Like so so what happened? Well, like, because like if I say pink elephant, right? Like yep. immediately is a pink elephant's popping up in your head, right? Yeah. And so if I just say that. Nothing pops up in your head. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not just that. There's music behind it. And so if your mind is creative in the elements of just sound, you're going to create a story or you're going to create something inside of your mind. Um, That's true. Because of the channel, I too try to focus on the lyrics because, well, if, if you and I didn't do this together, I would never break down the lyrics and all I would do is just say what I thought about the song or how I felt about it or what I saw during it. But my reviews would be very, <laughs> they would be very short um, because I like to just feel a song, but I try to like focus on the lyrics to be able to talk more about it and stuff. But f- personally, when I'm listening to music, the first couple of times that I listen to a song, I don't necessarily need to see the lyrics unless you're showing me a song. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm going to experience it the first time by myself, I don't need the I don't need to see the lyrics. I want to just feel the song, and if I like the feel, then I want to know the lyrics. Yeah, I'm trying to get to where the guy's trying to take us. What's up, Clarissa? I'm I'm trying to get yeah. to when when I hear when I look. So that's what I'm saying. That's why the lyrics are important to me. Like, yeah, obviously anybody can fill in the blanks, but for me, like when the when the lyric pops up, it turns on the TV to the channel that the author was trying Agreed. to get us. And that's, it's important to me to be able to be like, okay, that's what you were trying to say. Okay, I got you. Right. Obviously, now we've got the lyrics right in front of us, so you can do that. But I do think that's a weakness in a lot of bands. Like, they're missing out because to some degree, like, the lyrics themselves create that kind of heaviness. Like, the opening song with Slipknot, enemy, show me what you want to be. I can handle anything, even if I can't handle you. Rather, like, either way, it better be. Don't you fuck. Like, the lyrics themselves, like, fuck the shit, I'm sick of it. You're going down. This is a war. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. that itself is heavy. Mm-hmm. Like, that itself creates an aggression that you would have even if there were no guitars or yeah. drums. Yeah. Like, that's, that's some shit you say when you're about to get busy. So, so when you put that into the context of the the guitars like it communicates a completely different dimension so i think it's a weakness a lot of times in black metal or just metal in general where it's like i can't hear a damn word that you're saying but this one and i you know i always talk about this with synth like they didn't overuse it i don't think it started off oh no i didn't think so either it started off very you know very light and then kind of like toward the end but like they, they relied, in my view, they were still relying on their instrumentation and their skill as instrumentalists. And mm-hmm. and then obviously, when they got to the clean part on the vocal on the chorus, I thought that was great. Because that was like, at like the 346 mark in the song. Like, it was like half the song was done. And then boom, you're hit with this clean vocal yeah. style. It was, I thought, I thought that was pretty, um, I like that, I like that part of it where they, they throw something into the music that you weren't expecting. It catches it. It catches you kind of like off guard. Mm-hmm. I'm like off guard a little bit with the, with the vote. It's like boom, you know. Like sometimes with like hyper progressive bands, they throw a whole. They, they just throw the kitchen sink it's at too it. Too much. Everybody knows how I feel about that. Yeah. But this one, like the discipline that they showed, especially like that little interlude part in the middle where it was just kind of almost acoustic a little bit. Mm. Then they put a little bit of the synth in there. It was like a, a little bit of an oasis. I was just listening to, uh, I think the band is called Archspire or something like that. The drummer, he plays at like 400 beats a minute or something. Really crazy, insane, oh gosh. you know, workload. And he talked about that they have these like instrumental, you know, interludes in the middle of their fast, heavy songs. And he's like, yeah, I'm just trying to get a break. A break, <laughs> And like that's that's so true, because a lot of my it's a lot of down chugging. You do you do a lot of There's that. A bunch of that down chugging, and my hand is like ah. So it's like yeah, I, I need a break here. And then it's like oh well, look at this nice, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
You you know like you're so stoic with your re reactions when you're having like when you're uncomfortable. I don't even realize it and then all of a sudden like you stop and I see you do this and then I'm like, "Oh shit, that must have been hurting." You yeah. Yeah, uh, some of that is just just bad technique. Oh, like well. you know what I'm saying? Like uh, you, you're just trying to like muscle your way into the to the thing when in reality you, it's just you just have bad technique, which is you know that's kind of been my solution a lot of times. I'm just going to muscle through this shit instead of, you know, like slowing down and doing the thing the way it's supposed to be done. Um, Johan on his swimming lessons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so a wizard, a wanderer, traveler, searcher, seer, sojourner to the lands beyond. You know what this reminded me of? Was the uh, active imagination thing? Yeah. Because there's this one guy, he's a lawyer or something like that, and he's like in, he goes into this world and he's... Yeah, yeah. The, the, okay, so active imagination is basically, the idea is there is nothing that you cannot, that you can imagine in your mind that doesn't have some sort of connection either to the actual world or to your own subconscious. <clears throat> and this is union stuff and and there's there's I don't want to say a debate but variances of opinions among unions about is that's Carl Jung's work just in, I mean I'm sure people probably know but right but, but there may be some people that are not familiar there's an actual YouTube video of him talking it's a very difficult he he's very difficult to listen to because his accent and and like the way that he phrases things is like you have to constantly rewind but long story he has short a really did you hear his upbringing and like his story? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, but long story short, he was talking about the inner world, which is in your mind. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the outer world, and he goes, "Okay, the outer world, you know, it's tactile; you can touch things. You you assume that is real, and then the inner world in your imagination that is." Even in the term imagination, people think mm -hmm. of it as like, okay, it's not real. Mm -hmm. It's just some figment you put in your head. And you, I'm not particularly certain like how clear he is on this, but he, he basically said, well, no, the inner world is also real. And he didn't, he didn't say it like it's real in its own way or whatever. He's saying, no, it's real. Mm -hmm. And so based on that idea, he... The, 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 the idea of active imagination is where you go into that world and then you you meet almost like a DMT trip mm -hmm. where you meet uh, certain characters and those characters if you actually engage with them will tell you things that end up affecting you in the real world and so we've been on that kick for three or four weeks now and it's it's been pretty I think it's very helpful i haven't like taken that time aside to to really go and uh, kind of explore in the, in the last the last engagement that i had was that direction you had me you know try, try going in that didn't work for me mm -hmm. um but i definitely have i definitely notice like a difference when you know my agitation level is much lower when i get that it's very short amount of time too it's only 30 45 minutes so right. i think it takes a big big chunk of your day but so, so the reason I'm bringing that up is because there's a lot of imagination here. Obviously, you're talking about a wizard or wanderer. And obviously, we, Jung talks about archetypes and things like that. Mm. And so when you look at the whole D&D &D culture, you know, which is I'm assuming is part of the whole dungeon synth thing. When you look at that culture, it's it's very interesting to me because the worlds are, are very simple in the sense that there's good guys and there's bad guys. Mm -hmm. There's good magic and there's bad magic, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 the bad guys are really really bad and the good guys are really really virtuous, and it it creates a very it, the world is almost simplistic. I was gonna say yeah, and it in and I think all of us are having a hard time dealing with the the moral complexities of this version of reality, whatever that is. And so to go into a world like this, it, it kind of gives the mind some relaxation. You say, okay, oh, yeah. that's a good guy, that's a bad guy. Yeah. And also with the wizardry and things like that, it's like there are no, there are no limits to what you can do in that world. Mm. And I think there's a part of humanity that, that, that needs that kind of 
needs that kind of release. And I'm not I'm not certain. Yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna say that. But yeah, it's very, very interesting stuff. Hmm. Um Battling foes, ancient and cruel, malevolent creatures of evil, beasts carved from ice, born of malignant witchery. Metherian marauders, gnarled and grotesque, wielding weapons forged in the black sands of eternity. Defeater of iniquity. Bane of the wretched, mage of the mage and warrior, caster of spells, champion knight, slayer of the wicked, guardian of the eternal well. Wizard wise and powerful, yada yada yada. See that, what I'm saying? Like it's like it's it's mostly a description about the wizard himself. Mm -hmm. More than it's telling a story of like I guess in the dis in the descriptions you're kind of getting an idea of what he's done. Ahmad, salam alaikum, buddy. Um, defeater of iniquity is really interesting. So iniquity is is sin. It's badness. So he's a defeater of wicked and the bane of the wretched. Now, now Kel, I think Kel said that this was the first um, song on the record. Which is very, very interesting because it kind of tells the whole story right from the beginning. If this is the, if this is the whole record, if this is the first song on the record, because he's battling foes, he's destroying all these bad guys. There's an ancient well, an eternal well, apparently yeah. that he's guarding. First that, song on the record, yes. That apparently this eternal well is important because it, it's you're guarding, you're guarding something that I, I'm assuming is giving life to the whole village or whatever. Um, I, I saw Ian posted something yesterday. He was like, uh, "You remember? Uh, is that her name? T Daenerys Targaryen, the uh, the, so. the, yeah, the dragon the lady? lady, yeah." Mm -hmm. And she's got like a like a, a paragraph long introduction, was. like "Mother of Dragons, mm -hmm. the Unburnt, the the Sea mm -hmm. Sea of Grass, whatever, whatever, whatever." Um, those are really really cool. Those are really really cool. Um, so yeah, I, I really I really like this song, and I, I'm very intrigued at, at as to the world that this guy created. And then it th when I think about like the Dungeons and Dragons stuff, like because one of one of our best friends on the channel, Maida, he's he does Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Okay. And I remember when I first heard about D and D, I'm like, oh, this is stupid, yada yada yada. But now that I'm looking at you, it's like this is a very, I mean. Dungeon, playing Dungeons and Dragons is is almost like a, a co-op active imagination session. Mm -hmm. It's just that it seems to me that the people playing it, like, they're coming into it saying, okay, this is clearly not reality. We're just trying to have fun here. But, but I wonder, like, what would happen if they played that game with the union understanding of active imagination and then saying okay everything we experience here is real yeah that's so weird yeah. and and what the implications would be in this realm mm -hmm. i think would be very very fascinating yeah if because yeah. i i would if there was like a local group of people where that was like happening and people could get over their insecurity because i'm sure a lot of people would be insecure oh, yeah. and be like, oh you know we're just pretending here blah 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 it's like I don't know, man. That shit is real. Like, it's really real. Like, the people that you meet in there, and, I mean, I'm obviously not going to share with y'all, but I don't know. It's Has it had, like, effects on you in the real world? Well, it does, as far or, as self-understanding. Or, or, in, or in this world, or whatever people call this place. Yeah, it does, as far as self-understanding, because there's, there's just, like, a, you know, a lot of ourselves that we don't we don't focus on like there are certain elements of our person that we're just not interested in hearing or working through or or listening to or even looking at it a lot of times it's you know when certain feelings are connected to traumatic events or whatever like you you just want to put all that stuff behind you and so you don't even want to focus on it so it's really taking the time to listen to your subconscious you know i was talking to somebody who oh my god her story was just absolutely horrible you know what what she went through from you know being drugged to raped and all of this was on a you know she was on her way to a f very close family member's funeral when this all happened just oh. a horrible line of events for yeah. this person yeah 
you know, and she was talking about how the the one thing that she, you know, like whenever you see like rape scenes or whatever depicted in film, it's really horrible. And I think that, you know, unless there's something wrong with you, you can look at that and say this, that's really, really fucked up what's happened to that person. Um, but you don't see a lot of the aftermath as in like the people, they don't want to sleep because when they sleep, your subconscious forces you to face the things you don't want to face. And so, you know, I think that that's true of a lot of us, especially people that remember their dreams. I think that, that everybody kind of has to face their subconscious in their dreams, but a lot of times people don't remember their dreams or they've, they've done a really good job at blocking even their dreams out. Um, and some people just, I think, don't know how to even begin to see what their dreams are, are like you, they forget by morning and, but I, there is, there yeah, is work that you can do I, to I remember your dreams if yeah. you want to remember them. Um, oh, really? There is? I, yeah. I've told you that before. Hmm. Maybe um, I was just and you actually could do it because you wake up so much during the night. Um, it's true. So you know, it kind of, like, it's the subconscious, that part of yourself that you don't focus on, that you don't want to listen to, that you kind of shove off to the side, and um, it's allowing that part of yourself to kind of free up and be able to, you know. I'm very intrigued by this Vecna person. He said <laughs> Vecna turned out to be real. I also love that name, Vecna. Mm-hmm. That's a That's a very, very, very cool name. All right, uh, this song's a 9.3 for me. Very, very strong opening. I'm going to go with a 9. 9, okay. Mm. The night Again, has just... not my vocal style, but I really liked what they did with it musically and um, the way that it made... I felt like I was in... I, again, I wasn't reading the lyrics, but I felt like that I was in like a very cold area. There was a castle, and there was a lot of like... You know, there was a wizard. Stuff like that was all going on, so yeah. Anyway, okay. somebody said, I don't know if you should talk about the DMT experiment live, and I'm not really sure why they would say that. Do they I, think I we're think, talking about that we were on DMT? And we, Yeah, I've, I've never been uh, live with DMT. No, not, never neither been, one of us have. <laughs> I've never been live. <laughs> so, I don't we're, know. We're talking about to. other people's ex experiences with it when they speak about it. Uh, okay, you guys, that was just song number one. We've got more to come. Which mountain? Whoops. No, it's not which mountain is up next. Sacramento. Sacramento. When the when night, night surrounds, me. surrounds me is next, losers. We shall return. Shout out to Delaney O'Connell. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone. Uh, potato man. Uh, potato. Do you guys ever have a break in your faith, lose faith momentarily, or have you both had constant unbroken faithing? I uh, I went through a uh, I had a failed attempt at atheism when I was in uh, kind of high school 18, 19, 20. I, uh, I, I badly failed at uh, atheism at that point. I, I, I failed so badly at it that I, I never even said I used to be an atheist. I don't even say that when I talk to my friends because it's bullshit. I, I don't I don't think I was I was acting like I was, but I really really wasn't. But um, I I was not a fan of uh, Christianity, God, whatever you want to call it, at that time. I've never had like failed faith, but I've had I've been very angry at God um, for a lot of years. That that was that was real, and that's even something that I'm still like journeying my way out of. Um, a lot of I think when a lot of events kind of back to back to back, and. Um, yeah. You don't probably have the support that you need and you just kind of feel like you're just kind of out there like and then then the understanding that everything that happens to us that God is behind it. It's not like God sits back and says, "Oh, look what's happening," or that he allows things to happen, but that God is the cause of things. It can it can be hard. It can be hard to accept and you know, like Sometimes we want to look on the the one side of things, like when when I had my miscarriage, just saying like, oh, you know, like the baby's in a good place, blah 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 blah. But then there's there is the other raw side of it that says, okay, well, I had a baby in my womb. That baby is never gonna be in my arms, and how much that hurts, and and, and to know that that God was the one that decreed that for my life, um, 
and you know other things obviously that that went on and, and unresolved things and so I think that yeah I mean I, I definitely went through a, that like and I'm still again journeying journeying my way out of it I used to um like pursue God almost every single day and then I stopped for the longest time because I was just so angry and it was hard to be in that place because I'm a very judgmental person and so for me to see my own self like re like rejecting God and being angry at God I was like oh I'm not sure if I'm really good with this but it was how I genuinely felt and um you know one of the things that I this channel was a big help for that was that um you know we talked a lot of times about people that would be raised in a Christian household or in a religious household and then they would completely go away and, and they would, you know, join Satanism or um, all these different types of things that, that people did. But th when you get into the, the discussion with them, you realize that it was that there were some horrible events that took place in the name of God oftentimes. And so the person couldn't reconcile God and these horrible events and so they said okay well I'm getting away from it and that was really the only way for them to be true and, and also for them to actually in the end end up saving their faith was because if they were honest about it in the end that you know once you work through and you begin to see things from, from other angles and and um, and I think that the desire for wanting truth is a big thing too so yeah so being able to see like those conversations that we were having with other people, mostly Vin was the one that was saying it to them because I was like, fine, yeah, I'm feeling the same way. So I wasn't really saying a whole lot. Uh, mostly it was him. But but when he was talking to people, I was also listening and I was like, okay, yeah, that's a good point. And so I think that I, I kind of had my, you know, my loop out to just be, you know, angry and, and frustrated with God. And, um, but at the same time, there's like this verse in the Bible that I think about, you know, semi often where... I think like Jesus said something to his disciples and it was something that was like a little bit weird and people were leaving because they were like, what is he talking about? This is, this is too much. And then, um, he looks at his disciples and he's like, are you also going to leave? And, um, one of his disciples looks back at him and he's like, well, where are we going to go? You're the one that has the words of life. And I think that that's basically how I feel. Like, I think that the, the time of being angry was necessary and be, because it was honest and, um, but it, at the end of the day, I'm like, well, who else has the words of life? So I don't think that I, I don't think that I ever had no faith, but I definitely had angry faith, which feels worse than no faith. I, th I think from my perspective, it feels worse, um, because it, it feels like sort of like maybe an aggressiveness toward God and a, and a real aversion to anything that is touched by God. So that, that it's not a good place to be. And I didn't like being in that place, but I do think that it was a necessary part. And I tried to give myself the space and not judge myself too much for it. So I guess that's a really long way of answering that question. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just say, Michelle, that, um, if the Christian God is real, that means he loves your, you and your daughter and he wants you and your daughter more than you love and want you and your daughter. He's not trying to find ways to zap people in hell and you can't, you can't condemn your daughter to hell anyway. I would just say, if I was you at this point, I'd just say, okay, uh, if you're up there, or if you're there somehow, um, I will follow you if you make the truth um, unmistakably clear. Mm -hmm. And I think if you challenge God that way, then you can, you can rest in that. Um, because if he wants you, then he'll make himself unmistakably clear. Uh, and he does. So that's how I'd say. So, I, you know, the, the, the most often repeated commandment in the Bible is do not be afraid. So I, I, I respect God, um, but but he doesn't he doesn't want us to fear him. So not that way. Mm -hmm. It's one of the worst things in the world. I remember one time I was hanging out with one of my friends and he's one of these like old school disciplinarians. And um he had a surprise for his son and he called us. He's like, Hey, and the kid turned around and the kid was scared to death. Cause you know, that was the nature of the relationship at the time. And, uh, I remember being in the car with him and he just completely broke. He's crying. He's like, my kid, my own kid is afraid of me. And, you know, obviously in true Vinny fashion, I said, well, what the fuck do you expect him to be? You <laughs> You're so fucking mean to him every two seconds. Of course he's scared of you. Um, 
But it was heartbreaking for him mm-hmm. that, you know, their relationship had gotten to that point. So I, I would I would say that um, uh, that guy he loved his kid, but he was he was a horrible father. And even he um, was heartbroken over that. So how much more a good father? Yeah. Anyway, we have another song on the way. Commercial break. Wait, wait, wait. It, uh... Well, I don't know. It's weird to say Potato Man because I'm not sure it's like Potato Man or something. Um, that see, that's what I'm talking about. You had this really horrible event that took place, and then that, as a result, you know, made you come to the point where you faith was gone to you. Um, but the fact that you're still asking the question right now tells me that your faith is not completely gone. That's an act of faith itself. Mm-hmm. That's an act of faith itself. And I'm I'm very sorry to hear that happen to you. That's that's fucked up, man. Fuck those people, bro. Yep. Uh, in love. In love, though, if you're one of those people. Fuck you. In love. All right. Commercial. I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It's sorry it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. It's how shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. As you can see here, hail to the extreme underground. Hail to the epic underground. This is an alliance, alliance meeting. Where we are going to be doing four songs, dear listener. Okay, the next one. Sacramentum. When the Night Surrounds Me is the name of the song. I like that title. When the Night Surrounds Me. Going Oh, and uh, shout out to Kellandros, again, the leader of that crew. Going all the way back to 1996 with this one, Sacramentum is a classic band from Gothenburg, Sweden, that mixed melodic black and melodic death metal with symphonic flourishes. <laughs> this was off their debut album, Far Away From The Sun. And the lyrics are, are right up there for you if you're interested. Mashallah. Okay, here we go. Sacramentum. Uh, when the night surrounds me, let's do it.
Sacramento. Shout out to Vlad, DJ Vlad in the All house. All right. <clears throat> you know what this reminds me of? We were down by that little beach thing, and uh, we were talking about moving to Florida. Yeah, okay. But then, and then, then you talked about Alaska. Oh my God. And I was like, "Yo, six months of darkness. I would love that shit." Man. And that this lyric right here. Look at this lyric right here. Oh. I can feel the night caress my body with its beauty and the cold, dead light. I knew that was where you were going right From there. the moon upon the black sky, subhanAllah. Night is all around me as I drown in delight. Oh, night, I am overwhelmed by thy majestic might. That right there is crazy. I The cold, <laughs> dead light from the moon. That's interesting because, like, if you think about the light of the sun... Yeah. It brings you warmth. Mm. Yeah. So like you you you're feeling the sun. Mm -hmm. But the moon, I've never heard anybody say like I feel the moon's light. I do, though. Yeah, but you really don't. You don't feel the moon's light. No, I do, and it feels cold to me. And I and you're looking at me like that like, "Oh, well, whatever, babe. I know. I go and I stand under the moon. I've done it many times, even this year alone. He's talking about scientifically. Oh. Well, oh, I'm saying, well, I don't know. The, the I feel like that radiate, kind of... It doesn't radiate any kind of... No, no, no. It's an internal feeling, and yeah, it makes I, me feel cold. Right. What I'm talking about is, like, f actually feeling the sun. Oh, well, And yeah, actually yeah, yeah. feeling yeah, the moon. feel it burning your skin. <laughs> yeah. Well, or just warm. Yeah. But like, like you actually feel the radiation of the sun is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. It's the moon, you can emotionally or esoterically yeah. feel the moon. Absolutely. I'm sure yeah. there's some weird... Wouldn't surprise me, especially with you. You don't uh, feel that when you go and you stand underneath the moon? No. No, I don't, I don't feel the moon. Well, you know how my mind works. Like, there's got to be a scientific gateway to it somehow. Oh. If it's not, then, you know... Like I I, appre I I look at it as like poetic and things like that, but like if there's no like paper I can look at where it's like oh people feel them, then it's probably a weakness in my you know hmm. overarching worldview. But so, I've got to have I've got to have like some sort of scientific whatever whatever you know what I'm I saying? Don't, I don't need that at all because I, there's so much stuff we haven't explored and we don't understand. Blah blah blah. For me, when I stand when I go in the sun. Before I necessarily feel the warmth of its rays, I feel what it like does with me internally, and I feel warmer. I feel more <clears throat> joyful. I feel like it's gonna, it's actually, it's gonna be okay. Whatever's bothering me is gonna be okay. And then I feel like the sun like starts in me, and it travels through my veins and goes out to the, the ends of my fingers and the tips of my toes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and and I feel the same way about the moon when I just. I, not if I have all the kids with me and everybody's crowding around me and talking and I can't, I, I cannot experience the moon that way. It has to be silent and you just, you're just quiet and you're just under the moonlight and you're just looking at the moon and then I feel like the cold of it. And I know that there's no life on the, on the sun <laughs> that we know of. I don't know. It'd be pretty ridiculous if something was on there, but, um, but it feels alive where the moon feels so it does it feels cold and um mm -hmm. and i feel it go through me and, and it i can see and feel the beauty of the moon like a sad song but it does give it it does make me feel depressed where the sun never makes me the feel moon depressed. makes you feel depressed yes i've been looking at the moon almost nightly ever since i heard donald don hoffman who in my opinion, is a genius. Literally look at the camera with a dead-ass serious face and say the moon is not there when you're not looking at it. And he's dead-ass serious, and he's got the math to prove that. So... It, is that Michelle's baby? Yes, it is. <laughs> she's adorable. <laughs> That's the updated pic. Look how big she's gotten, <laughs> subhanAllah. Yeah, stop doing that in and out. It's making me feel sick. She, the way that she's got her little hand, it's like, she's like... I'm going to take... Know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adopt her! <laughs> um, yeah, 
I, I love that. I love that poetry. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know what it actually says about me, but I was out there last night and I looked to the left and there was like that blue tinge of mm-hmm. like morning is coming. I was like, oh, this sucks so bad. I, I, I wish I could have, you know, Kai saying six months of darkness isn't fun. Like, oh, God, I would I would love that. I would love it. If, if it was up to me, I, I would literally like. You know, just stay in... I'd have blackout curtains. I would stay in my room, get my guitar. I broke another one of my strings. Son of a bitch. And you know I got those thick gauge strings, so... Because I knew I was going to be chugging on that bitch, but... Anyway. Um, yeah, but if it was up to me... I, I, I would... I really believe I would enjoy that six months of darkness. I really, really would. We're like pol- polar opposites on stuff like that. Oh, I like know. Like, before, whenever I would in my previous house the moment that I would wake up the very first thing that I would do is go around and open up every shade in the entire house because I needed this I often feel very depressed in the mornings um see because so, the morning if the morning never came then you wouldn't be depressed no no right no I feel better once the sunlight comes in I need the morning I'm probably depressed because I've been sitting in darkness but you like the shades drawn all the time. And where we live, there's a lot of people around. So you do have to kind of have the shades, you know, covering the windows. But holy shit, oh, it's, it's, it's exhausting for me. Very, very, very difficult. And he, this, it's so interesting because, yeah, I see what he says. Night is all around me as I drown in delight. I drown in like, it's too much. Oh, darkness. I, 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 I uh, very much enjoy. I very much enjoy uh, darkness. I mm-hmm. love it. I also love. I like some. I, I pro- like- it probably has to do with my extreme introversion, because that represents to me everybody aloneness, dog. solitude, quietness. I can think. Um, yeah. Obviously, that that kind of gets sidetracked when you know I, I load up the guitar and stuff. But I try not to play it because you know because you and stuff. Maybe I'll just move it to the basement. No, please don't do that. I would rather wear earplugs and have you there than you being gone. When I wake up, and I wake up a lot because my body's uncomfortable, I, like, wake up and you're not there. It makes me very sad. This is a crazy line. If I could, I'd kill the the sun and give the life to the moon. (laughs) That's a good line. That's a good line. Um... Yeah, I'm not certain about what exactly that says about me. That I, uh, I, I really, oh, I, it probably has to do. There was a very, very. I'll, we'll talk to you later about it on the walk. It was when I first, first came to this country. I must have been like four years old, and I remember something very. It's weird, like how vivid those memories are. But, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that blue kind of tinge when like it's going from... I don't like that time I either. can't stand that. Um, Sometimes I see it when I stay up late with you and I'll see it coming through that I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, that sucks so bad. I don't like that. But like, you know, back in the day I used to hate it because it meant that like I got two hours of sleep and then I had to do a full day of work. Now, like, we're on the rock stars. <laughs> yeah. In a rock star schedule and I, I hate it just as much. So, the work really isn't the issue. It's I don't know. Like, I saw a Twilight Zone episode one time, and the guy was like, he basically said, I wish there were no people around, and all I had was my books. And, and you know, it was one of those be careful what you wish for mm. things, because the guy woke up and there were no human beings around. Oh, God. And it took him a couple minutes to figure out, like, what had happened. And he was so happy. He was reading his books and all this. And then his glasses broke. So it's basically because <laughs> all he wanted to do was read his books, and then his oh, that's awful. Which I thought, you know, Mr. Lipinski was like, "See, the moral star is like ridiculous. Like he couldn't. There's no, he can't find any glasses shop or anything like that. He's con- he's condemned to be blind for the rest of his life. Ridiculous. Like he could feel his way around and find a pair of eyeglasses. Mr. Lipinski was like, "Man, shut the fuck. Just sh- sit down." <laughs> um, so I'm not really sure. Uh, Wait, along that line, I have to say, there is a question that I've never been able to answer all of my life, and 
Okay, so I hate being alone. Like, to be alone, completely alone. Like, when you watch these shows and, like, somebody finds themselves completely alone and there's nobody else around for miles and miles, that to me is really horrible. So, I ask myself the question, would you rather be the only person left on the planet or would you rather be on the planet with bad people? Oh, that's easy for me. You're going to take alone on the planet. I would be alone. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not so sure. I'm not for myself. Oh, no. Alone you, completely. You, no, you would be with the bad people. And then you'd find I, some you way. You'd be you'd with find the bad some, people. You would find some way to make them good or something like that. That's how you, your mind is so powerful. But this guy, he, he, you know, I was really feeling what he was saying. I feel the night caress my body with its beauty, the cold, dead light from the moon upon the black sky. He wrote it very like, beautifully. I'm, I'm, I'm. Like, that's where I'm at. I love when that When night shit. slowly spread its blackened wings and I breathe out chilly, moist, and mist, I experience an obsession of evil which I worship. What was he talking about? Well, I mean, night people usually, and you know, biblically this happens, night is usually associated with evil. You know, light came into the world and men loved darkness because their deeds were evil. Um, so, you know, darkness there is obviously a theological sort of thing, but... <clears throat> I mean, this person, it looks like he, he, you know, he says he opens his vein and all the rest of it. So, you know, it's, it's not a good, it's not a good situation. Like the light, the night not is not a having a very good influence on this mm. fella. Um, under the mighty wings of blackness, I deny my earthly existence embraced by the nocturnal paradise. I will forever belong to the night. I, I just, you know, it makes me say like, bro, did you have to take it to that degree? You yeah. have to jump off a bridge. Like, you can you can find ways to enjoy the darker side of things without you know mm -hmm. denying your existence. That's pretty crazy. <clears throat> Vlad says I like human interaction in limited doses. After a few hours, even with people I consider friends, I gotta get the fuck out of there. It just drains me. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the same thing for me, man. Like I gotta, which is like my guitar. Like it's it's funny because like I said, like I relate to the guitar. Like you know, it's like a like another person. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And uh. Right now, it's really frustrating me, but, um, yeah, I don't know necessarily what that says about me, because, like, I like, the, the introversion aspect of me is definitely explicable that way, but there's also just the plain, I love the darkness, like, aesthetically speaking, mm -hmm. not just, oh, because it means everybody's quiet and whatever, and I don't have to deal with human beings, it's just, aesthetically speaking, I love the vibe. I love the feel of it. So, I, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know. I've always been like that. I remember I used to be a little kid. I used to be downstairs playing uh, Mario, Mario 2. And my whole family would be upstairs. Talk, I could hear them, whatever, whatever. I'd be downstairs in the basement, and I would turn the lights off. Like, I would I would be down. I was like six, four, five, six years old, downstairs in my basement. Nobody else was down there. Everybody was upstairs. I could hear the whole world up there. And I would turn off the light. I would be there for hours. I mean, I would sit there till I beat the game. And, then, you know, it was a, I'd start from start to finish almost every night. You know, like, what I do with Madden? And I, But I would, like, make sure I got away from everybody. We had another room upstairs. Like, that was free and open. It had Nintendo. Nope, I wanted the Nintendo downstairs, in the dark, in the basement. I don't know why. To this day, I don't know why. Um, I picked the brightest room in my entire house. And even though it was also the hottest room, that's where I wanted to be because I needed the light. Open up the shades. Sometimes I have dreams that I go back there and the lights won't work and they're too dim. I'm like, no, I can't. I can't do that. You need a lot of light. A lot of light. <laughs> okay, what do you get the song? I don't like the vocal style. I just feel like it just r ruins. And I under But that's the type of music that it is. And so I just, I feel bad like giving it a low rating because I don't like it but it is my opinion well, that's that's the that, entire reason that you have a rating scale it's your opinion of what yeah you I know like or what you don't like. I know I don't like I don't like that vocal style and I feel like wow that was such a beautiful track without that vocal style and then you added that in and it just became so what did you give it Yara Sul? 6.5 I give it an 8.8 .8. it was a good song it was a very very good song um, it's an eight point eight, mostly for 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 the lyrics, for show, sure. for show, sure, for show, sure, for show. Sure. Mm -hmm. We have more songs on the way, dear listeners. Stay tuned. 
Then out. Sorry, out. Go. Um. Yeah, Michelle, re re uh, reimagining your base worldview and things of that nature definitely is a scary thing. But uh, you know, like the scripture says, there's no fear in love, and perfect love casts out all fear. So, um, if if you're being paralyzed or terrified, uh, you can know that that's not God's will for you. The new absurd album Schwarz Bande is good, like high quality. Do you guys collect vinyl? I bought two albums on accident if you have a P.O. box. We do collect vinyls, actually. You know what's funny? It was Jim from Slipknot gave I'll me a the vinyl. Box in a here. Jim from Slipknot gave me a vinyl of uh, Iowa, and he signed it. Mm-hmm. Where is it? That that uh, at the time was the pin. Of, that's when I decided I am going to be a guitarist. Really? Yep. I got my first guitar because of Head, and then when I when I went to the Slipknot show and I got to meet, I, I met both of them. I met Jim and Mick, and um, I I was like, all right, guys, we're gonna let you go. Thanks for hanging out with us. Whatever. Jim said, give me a second. And he went to the tour bus. Oh, man. And we were about to leave. And then he jumped off the bus. And he's like, hey, guys, this is the last one I have. You know, I don't have anything. We didn't ask him for anything. You know how I am with the, I didn't. We didn't ask him for anything. He just gave it to us. It's un, un freaking believable That was before Vin and Sorry. Oh, yeah. That was, yeah, that was well. That was, that was after 9-11. SubhanAllah. That was like 20 years ago. Holy shit. I cannot believe that. That's crazy. That's insane. Yeah, it's September 11, 2001. It's 2022 now. So, yeah, that was 20 fucking years ago. <laughs> All right, you guys. Which Mountain that's, Nighthawk that's, is next? That's mind-blowing to me. That's absolutely mind-blowing to me that that was 20 years ago. All right. Here we are. Commercial break. We shall return. I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It's sorry, says... 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Okay, which mountain? We have a famous person in the chat. There he is. Uh, the big homie Nathan Carson, who is the drummer, manager, booker, co-founder since 1997. <laughs> Did you click it so it goes on the screen? Uh, of this band. Uh, uh, and I'm having extremely difficult time, Mr. Carson, downloading your song! Um, so uh, talk to the people, Soraya, while I figure, okay. while I figure this out. So, uh... Um, okay. Okay, we did a poll named Double Feature, taking two completely opposite sub-genres and placing the playlist side-by-side side in two polls at the same time. Which Mountain Nighthawk was the winner of the stoner doom metal side of the poll? Uh -huh. I always like anything that says stoner in it. 
This <laughs> this band hails from Portland, Oregon. Wow. What? I just feel like that they're going to be more deep. chill. <laughs> Do you need me to send you the check? Yeah, that would be great. Uh, Vinansori at gmail.com. Send me the check, Arasulala. Bonus note on this one. The current singer on this track, Kayla Dixon, used to live in Washington, D.C. They have a girl? Met... Yep. It's a girl singer? Yep. You know I'm going to love it. Used to live in Washington, D.C. where she met me uh, and became friends with, uh, with your very own Calendros. Friends is probably overselling it, but I definitely knew her from the local scene. I've been following her career ever since. <laughs> Yara yeah, Sula, look at this. Look at this. You you, you got to get a, uh, a, a thingy. Thumbnail. A oh, thumbnail. Oh, you look like you're there. possessed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a black girl singer at that. Okay, it's a 10. <laughs> it's there for my people. Vinitsori at gmail.com. We're going to just do this talking thing until I get this thing downloaded because this thing is being okay. a pain. I am going to create a thumbnail so Vinny doesn't look so weird. All right. So uh, while that email is coming, guys, uh, this is the band Witch Mountain. Yeah. Right? That's the name yeah. of the band? Did Witch I get Mountain. that right? That's what I heard. My eye, everybody's like every time I shoot a video, they're like Vin, what's going on with your eye, bro? I know. What's going on with your eye? What I know. I was in the comment section. I was like, literally. A, a we should have played that up. We li and we said really, what? We should. I don't know. Like me and you getting a disagreement, you smack me some shit. Wow. Okay. I why just, why does it have to be me? I, I would just like to see like, if, you know, oh, all those people, people would, being like, oh, that's what you get. They would come out. They would. Uh, they would make some excuse for your abusive behavior. They'd say, well, what did you do? They'd say, yeah. <laughs> they'd say, you probably deserved it, Vin. That's what they'd say. Like when you were mocking me for not having legs, everybody was like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> then I was like, your breath is kind of smelly. They're like, how dare you say that to her? <laughs> That's so wrong. Rude. <laughs> your breath is kind of smelly. Oh, that's so insulting. What is? Well, first of all, being in a situation where your breath is smelly, I used to obsess about that, remember? Yeah, you did. I always thought it was weird. Yeah. Because it's 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 one of those things where it's oh as if, look at this look at this Yara so. So wait a second. Is this right? Am I did I get the right copy of the song? Probably. Oh, because it says over ten minutes. Right. I see. So, so this is the right copy of the yeah. song. I see. It's yeah. all become clear to me yeah. now. now. It's we, all become clear. Now dear we listener. understand. Now we understand. Okay. Did so? Did sorry poke your eye again? Uh, no, I don't think it was Sori's fault this time. Look at everybody trying to blame me. It was, there was a, there, well, it was still kind of your fault because we wouldn't have been in the woods if it, if, if you didn't select that for our day day to go in the woods. Please. I'm like. What? Who? Was it, was it Kai? You were going to go in the woods with Kai? Yeah, I, I, I would have went to the woods with Kai. I was like, this, Okay. We what? sat in the woods. We were in there for two minutes. His legs were going. I was like. What does that have to do with anything? People that are woods people don't do that. You got to chill. You you're, gotta feel you, the energy of the forest. You're the arbiter of what woods people do. Yeah, right. I know what wood people do. Right. And they don't do that. I have I have the track because the, so, big, homie, okay, the big homie, the big homie, the big homie sent us the track. Now I am going to get the lyrics. Okay, and I'm gonna. Do we change... have the witch. Do we have the Witch Mountain lyrics? Yeah, here? they they've got them right in there. I'm just gonna change the thumbnail so you don't look so weird. Okay. That's fine with Does me. Does that make you feel better? That, uh, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Where are these lyrics, right. Yarosul? I don't see them. Click on the next one. Click on the other one that says that. What the first one? Yeah. Scroll down. Oh, there you look go. at that. We do have Ooh. lyrics. All right, you dumb butts. Here oh, we go. Okay. We have the song and we have the drummer. There's no need to insult people. Ah, uh, well, yeah, you never need to ins need to insult people, but I was talking to somebody about not I being like, mindful. I like to insult, but instead them. I used the word mindless. That, <laughs> that didn't go over well. Oh my gosh, this is great. This like, is great. Like, can you just understand that I have a baby brain right now? Yeah, the baby brain thing really doesn't really work with this family. Nobody cares. There's no mercy in this family no whatsoever. Mercy. All right, guys, here we go. We have the song. The name of the song is. We have the. Uh, well. The name we of the, the song lyrics. is Nighthawk. So I, yeah, I gotta switch the thumbnail on both of them because I don't know which one you look like you were possessed on. No, I got it. So. We're good. You All right, got let's it? go. You don't. Have, you don't have. I have the thumbnail. Okay. Okay. Now. All I'm right, ready. you ready? Yes. Did you say it? Witch Mountain Nighthawk. 
Witch Mountain Nighthawk. Shout out to Nathan. Shout out to Nathan. The Vinan Story debut. Debut, dear listener. Here we go. Nighthawk. Let's go. Settle in, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're starting. Hold on. Do you hear that? No. I hear no such thing. All right, hold on. See, the even Kai said it. False alarm. What did Kai, Kai say? Kai should take me. Kai said what? True, sorry. True forest people don't wiggle around and move their don't wiggle limbs their legs. like this, like they're in a nervous... You settle does, down, does, you Kai, feel does, the forest. Does, does Kai really think that that would happen? That would send you off into the wilderness without me? <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> Kai's too gentle to do what needs to be done. It and needs to be if somebody, done. If somebody came in and tried to do something reckless with you, Kai is too, <laughs> he's too gentle. He'd be like, well, can we talk about this? <laughs> can we talk about... Oh, How do you feel... <laughs> how do you feel? He'd ask the axe murderer how he feels and all this other shit. You know how Kai is. What brought you to this, this yeah. place? Yeah, what brought <laughs> yeah. yeah, let nature heal you. He'd probably like sprinkle him with snow and shit. Now you're free! No! Yeah, he's like, I'm a murderous killer. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, that's Kai. You need uh, a snowball fight. This bite. is just us stalling because we can't find the uh, the the thing. Hold on. Yeah, we've lost it. I, I think we have. I think we do have a. Solution. But you know we're Christians, and the name of the band is Witch Mountain, so that right, could that's be. Right, that's probably the reason. What's happening? Yeah, well, let's blame the victim here. <laughs> uh, this is your fault, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Witch, our parents, our parents Mr. would have said, Witch Mountain. That's demonic. <laughs> that's what you get for naming your band Witch Mountain, inshallah. Okay, we have it. All right, let's do the intro again so that we can cut this properly for them when yeah. we uh, put it on the cutting room floor. Okay. okay. <laughs> Here we are, we're about to review a new band new to the channel. Uh, the name of the band is Witch Mountain. The name of the song is called Nighthawk. This was brought to us by the Epic Underground, one of our famous alliances that yes. you can join too if you jump yes. on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And one of the perks of being a YouTuber is uh, you just start about rubbing elbows with famous people. We have the actual drummer of the band here. Yep. What are you doing? What are you doing in your dear day, dear listener? Yeah. Probably yeah. talking to mean people online. Probably yeah. getting cut off in traffic. We're hobnobbing with uh, <laughs> with famous people. Famous Speaking musicians. of mean people online, I I, I was rolling through our Slipknot uh, last latest reaction, and yeah. uh, the big it's homie up. Ben Webb showed up. Of course, did he? he? Pissed off everybody in the comment section. Did he? Uh, Multiple people commented he, under his comment. Did he say something disrespectful about the, of about course Slipknot? He of course, did. of course. All right, so the uh, the Epic Underground said we did a poll named Double Feature. Taking two completely opposite subgenres and placing the playlist side by side in two poles at the same time. Witch Mountain Nighthawk was the winner of the stoner doom metal side of the poll. This band hails from Portland, Oregon. Bonus note on this one, the current singer on this track, Kayla Dixon, used to live in Washington, D.C., where she met and became friends with our very own Calendros. Friends is probably overselling it, but I definitely knew her from the local scene, and I've been following her career ever since. <laughs> also known as stalking. So, Kayla, um, <laughs> look out! <laughs> if you see uh, a big burly white man with a very good uh, disposition, run for your life! He's stalking you. Okay, here we go. Nighthawk, let's do this. She, let's go. Success.
watching a live version on the other computer. Right. So we see Nathan.
Yo. So I'm so happy that you found that live version. Why? So I was well. Well, one as I was looking at the lyrics, but two. There, there, there's a pretty hot band right now that's got a girl. I'm not gonna mention it. So don't, don't even ask me. But they're they're really hot right now. It's a girl singer. Yada yada. Remember I told you I said oh, I said I said oh man you would dis- stage presence wise you would crush that broad like mm-hmm. this girl. I, I recommend you guys look at this live because this woman has stage presence like a motherfucker. Like, her stage presence is crazy. Like, yep. she... She does different voices and, like, she she changes. She in, Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she incarnates. Like, yeah. she physicalizes yes, what she she's does. doing with yes, the voice. Yes, she does. And it's, uh, I, you know, I, I got converted to metal from live, from a live band, mm-hmm. from Korn, live. Mm-hmm. And for me, like, that's like, and even when I'm thinking about playing our shit, like, that's why I'm like so crazy about making sure that in the strumming patterns, like, everything is perfect because I want to sound good live. But the way that this girl, holy smokes, um, shout out to her. Shout, I mean, obviously the band is. <laughs> here's one thing I'll say. I thought the last time we did a deep dive on doom metal, it was. Her uh, name is Kayla Dixon. With with uh, Zonia, mm-hmm. and it, I forgot the name of the band, but it was Doomy. But they they had enough variation. This band, the first couple, I'm like, I'm okay with build up, I'm all right with build up, but a lot of Doom songs I hear, the build up is the entire song. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh my god! So it was like 14 minutes, and it was it started off very subtle, but then I thought to myself. Yeah, sonically, it's going to be sludgy and, and the same thing the all, all the way through. But she's got enough variation with her vocal style to where it's going to be okay. But then when they started, like, the rising action with the... Ch- 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 and it was simple, but it was so heavy and it crept up on you and mm-hmm. surprised you. Mm-hmm. And then when you add how she variegated the... It, it was like... And then I was going back and forth the lyrics because I love the way... I don't know who does the writing here. But I love the way that they did the writings, and I love the cadence when she was when when shit was starting to get really sinister, and the buildup was happening. Like I love the way she pulled that shit off. And if you guys, I keep pointing this way because I was looking at the live video <laughs> this way. So if you guys come over to the house and like look at Sori's computer while we're doing the review, you can see very clearly that ah, uh, she just I, I I'm it's- very 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 surprised. I'm extremely surprised. Wait, why? I I uh I I did not anticipate liking this song as much as I did. Oh 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 oh. Yeah. And and I'm I'm very very affected by the lyrics, which we'll get into in a second. But holy yeah, shit. Yeah, I was like, I I have the lyrics like on another screen on my screen, but I would have had to click away from the performance, and I just was really interested in watching her stage presence. Um, the, it was. So it started out and it had a sort of blues sound to it. Right, it was. But bluesy, it was a unique sort jazzy. of blues sound that I have not heard before. It just had like kind of like those undertones to it, and I was like, "Hmm, okay, this is interesting." And I think that that was what made me say, "I," because I this saw is such a badass picture too of the old band. Yeah, when I clicked on, I wanted to check the band out, so I clicked on their their YouTube thing, and I saw that there was like a live video, but I thought. It was a cover of something. I didn't think that that was the actual band. But then when we read the, the stuff and we found out that it was a female vocalist, I was like, oh, that actually might be them. And um, and then once the song started, I'm like, mm, I need to see this performance. So I clicked back on that mm-hmm. video and I'm very glad that I did. Um, yeah, like her eyes, like <laughs> they kept changing because it was like the one part where she like sounded like a demon and her eyes looked like really freaking scary. And then there was another part where she was like singing, like it was toward the end where it was like this sort of like angelic and her eyes got very soft looking. And um, I was yeah. like, wow, and she just did such a great job. And I, and I was like, you know, shout out to the in- entire band, obviously. I mean, they're playing all, they're right. setting the stage for 100%. her. 100%. Um, so absolutely shout out to them. But I did feel like they were very freaking lucky to have her on the team. <laughs> because she really did, um, she really did a great performance. Um, I didn't, I didn't pull away from the, um, 
from the from the video. So the lyrics are, you know, I'm very interested to see, you know, where they went. I heard a couple of things that I was like, hmm, this sounds like lyrics I would like. And it did have a slow burn to it at first. Yeah. It, you know, it was kind of slow moving into it, which if you know anything about my playlist, I'm I'm good with music that does that. Yeah, um, you are. Because I want to sit man. there and I want to feel that for a while and stuff. So I was really vibing. I wasn't sure if I was going to like her vocal style. I really did. Um, and she like she, jazzy and bluesy, bro. Like yeah, the shit is just... she just she kept changing it. Like we were on this one song. There was a lot of variation. Um, uh, just very very fascinating. So um, I, I'd love to see like what the lyrics are about. Uh, my theory is that it, it's a it's a breakup. Or, or, uh, she's talk, or she's song. talking about her dad. My personal favorite. <laughs> oh, no, a dad song? Yo! Sociopath in Training says Kayla does a good cover of Soundgarden. I shit you not, guys. One of the things that I said that I was like, that I'm pissed about is the fact if her and Chris Cornell did some song oh. together, you know the Like a Stone song? You know yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Oh, Chris Cornell? Man. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. She remi- I'm like, yo... She's like a female Chris Cornell, bro. Like, oh like halfway gosh. in the middle of the song, that's what popped into my head. And I was going to type it to you, but when the lyrics came on the second part and it got heavy, I completely forgot. So I'm very, very wow. thankful that somebody, that sociopath in training, whoever he or she has said that, because I'm like, yo, that reminded me of yeah. the, she would be perfect with Chris Cornell perfect you know what they should do they should do some sort of like mashup where like mm-hmm. oh Chris the Cornell layering? is doing it and then she's doing it like, i have to say the layering like yeah i agree they could do, they could definitely do that i think the layering what they did with the song like i don't know if the, you realize how they layered her voice yeah, multiple yeah, yeah, yeah. times and she was that i really really liked i thought that they did a really good job with that as well where I think if we were only hearing the live version, we probably wouldn't have heard all those layers unless they're playing them in the background and she's just singing one. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and like, like it's it's a song you got to hear with your with your uh, with your headphones on and stuff. Like to, yeah. to get like all the yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, man, that that Chris Cornell, that's such a good catch. Now this this part right here, I'll pour out my indignation on you. I'll blow out against you. With the fire of my wrath and delivering you to the hands of brutal men who are skillful to destroy. You shall be fuel for the fire and your blood shall be in the midst of the land and you shall not be remembered. That's Ezekiel 21. <laughs> yeah, that's what you were saying. It's like, yo, that sounds like, uh, you know, that's it's like familiar. that Tarantino movie. I'll strike down upon thee with furious anger and then you'll know that I'm the Lord. Um, but uh, yeah, that was like some Old Testament shit. Mm. Which, like, a lot of times when I, when I like listen to these bands and they're they're getting really like epic i'm like yo if these people knew like there's so much epic shit in the bible you have no idea like especially like when god (laughs) when god gets mad Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like there is nobody that can threaten Mm -hmm. (laughs) like i will destroy you i will turn you over to the hands of brutal men who are skillful to destroy your blood will be in the midst of the land and you will not be remembered mashallah so like that to me, like that, like that, that was just so epic the way yeah. they were doing that. I'm like, oh my gosh! All right, so let's go back to. Okay, so they told me to I'd find original, you here. The li- original and list. gave me your name. Wait, wait, I was at the lock. Did you, you can't loser. hear? You can't listen. Yeah. Finally, you don't listen. Okay. They told me I'd find you here and gave me your name. I'll wait, and soon you'll appear, a cruel and familiar face. Say you remember the love you threw away. Say you'll remember the life that you lost on that day. Come to me. I've been waiting on you. I'll be here alone. Stranger, take me home. Appear to me. I've been waiting for you for so damn long. In my dreams, I've seen you here all alone. They say it's not wise to play with strange girls. I, a risk you know you will take. Fall down and beg. Come close. Reveal to me. Faces it you sounds hide. Sounds like some shit you would write, too. That's probably one of the reasons I like the lyrics so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I do like these. It sounds exactly like Soraya. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Continue. <laughs> Fall down and beg. Come close. Reveal to me. Faces you hide. Embrace reality. You left me to die. Your life is mine. Come to me. I've been waiting for you. I'll be here alone. Stranger, take me home. Die for me. I've been hunting for you for so damn long. In my dreams, I have seen you all alone. You know what you have done. Please have mercy on me, God, have mercy. 
Every action has its price. Please, God, have mercy on me. Have mercy. This is the only way. Yeah, so so that part right there, so it just looks to me like they met each other, they had a little thing, and then he left her. And I, it looks to me like this is what she would... You know like how like you replay arguments in your head, mm -hmm. but like you, you generally, you don't get to say it in reality? Or the person... I used to have this with, with, with my mom. Like, I used to have these arguments with my mom in my head where she would see my point. Yeah. <laughs> because yes. she, she wasn't that kind of person. Like, <laughs> like she just wasn't that kind of person. Like, she mm -hmm. didn't believe in this whole thing where it's like, oh, children are, you know, like, mm -hmm. children are to be, you know, like, look, mm -hmm. you're a child. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, so I used to have these arguments. And in, in, my, in, in, in my imagination going back to you my mom would have to listen to me and see my point mm -hmm. and say you know what Vinny I'm sorry you know, you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like I felt like it was like one of those uh, uh, type of uh, shout out to Sub Rosa by the way I love Sub Rosa they had that one song with the the Mormon thing it was like pretty crazy okay um, so I felt like it was one of those conversations where a breakup happened and the guy really doesn't care you know, oh, like yeah. one of those situations. And this is like her being able to confront him and him responding in a way that would be, you know, emotionally satisfying. Like him seeing what he did was wrong or him seeing that he hurt her and oh, asking yeah. Say her. Say you for, remember the love you threw away. Right. Say you remember the life that you lost on that day. Yeah. Yeah. See what I'm saying? And, yeah. And, and like the, the reality is, you know, especially with dudes, like dudes are, are a lot are able to move on from relationships, significant ones quicker than than girls are. And the other thing is, is there's a lot of times when there's like an emotional mismatch in the relationship where one person thinks that they're on like a nine point nine as far as intensity and the other person's like at a two, but you're at a nine. So you think the other person's at a nine. And then the breakup happens and the guy kind of moves on pretty quickly mm -hmm. like nothing happened mm -hmm. because it was a two for him, but it was a nine for you. And so you're left with all of this whatever. So to me, this was like a conversation. It was like one of those situations. And she's angry and she's hurt. But, you know, it looks like maybe he cheated on her because she's talking about like uh, playing with strange girls, you know, all that type of thing. But... It, it looks like it's it's one of those situations where she's she's having this confrontation and she's being a, she's able to satisfy that part of herself because he's giving back to her mm. I'm sorry I was wrong blah 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 but in reality it I don't it looks like maybe he was kind of apathetic about the whole the whole situation ouch yeah is okay. what it is what it looks like to me so that's the first half of the lyrics. And then the second half of the lyrics are... She says, Now I will know your true face and the curtains will fall over your storyline, swallowing you whole, dissolving the poison over time, carried into this river... Uh, reverie? It's reverie, yeah, right? Yeah, reverie, yeah. By a familiar face, revolting malevolence, somehow manages to satiate. This is the only way. Please have mercy on me, God. Have mercy. Oh, boy, do I love that part. Um, this is the only way. I yeah, she says, the only... I'm the only God. So in the, her situation, like, she she is the God that he's asking mercy from. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So... I will rid my blood of you. Time slows... Right, think about that. I will, I, will, I will rid my blood of you. Yeah. Like, there's a... I think there's a verse in the Quran that says, Allah is closer to you than your jugular vein. Right? So, like, your, like your blood is, like, it's inside of you. So, like, this person got to her yep and then he you know the relationship ended yada 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 so she's saying i will i will rid my blood of you like that's how close this guy was to her um, wow look at that and then she goes into that verse that yeah exactly she says death will clean the slate i will right. pour out my indignation so, on you right and i will blow against you with the fire of my wrath and deliver right. you into the hands of brutal men who are skillful to destroy. You shall be fuel for the fire. Your blood shall be in the midst of the land. You shall not be remembered. And right. then she says, they say it is not wise to play with strange girls. Yeah, he probably cheated on you. A risk you know her. you will take. Fall down. Burn my promises made. Next time you see me, you'll run. All my love turned to dust. 
So, uh, it looks like this is like the craziest, wow. hardest breakup song ever. Uh, gentlemen, <laughs> if you see this young lady... <laughs> Treat her well. So it will go well for you. You better be nice to her. <laughs> you better be nice to her. Oh, man. <laughs> because... I feel that she probably wrote these lyrics. I don't know. Yeah, she, um, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this he definitely said, he feels said, like it has he, the wrath he, he of a woman's the, touch to it. Yeah, uh, yeah, hell hath my mom. You know, she, hell hath. She said, Vincent, hell hath no wrath like a woman scorn. You hear me? <laughs> yeah, man. I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what that meant. I do now. I, I do say, now. Do now. I do now. Stay on the straight uh, and narrow. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I really, really love this song, man. I really love this song. Do Metal is a very... Uh, Calendros and those folks, that was really risky because I've articulated on numerous occasions. <laughs> um, I do not like Do Metal. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like slow burning... I, I like, like, yeah, yeah. give me the shit now. I'm like a child. Yeah. Yeah. But this song, this is... I really, really, really enjoyed this song. Really... This is one of the songs that actually got better as it went along. And I I thought it was really smart the way that she, she did. She went through multiple styles, but all of them were believable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I was listening to her stuff, I was thinking, oh, man... That's one thing, because, like, I did some of those those music-y things online, and I, I really like face-to-face -face contact and, like, being with the same, like, in the same room as another person. It's important to me. And I was thinking, oh, I would like to have an internship of, like, music mm. under her. You know what I mean? Like, sing with her, like, some of the songs. And, like Yeah, and learn some. 100%. You know, learn, because I think that the way that she was able to flip through personalities or like tap into her other versions of subconscious yeah it's definitely yeah yeah, yeah. That's, and that's... and i get to incarnate some of that into that the our other song that really we could just finish and just release at least the vocals the the uh the yeah. music and all that on patreon but <clears throat> like on that one i feel like i get the opportunity to flip through a couple different whatevers so I and I like that, but and it's if that's a unique way of doing music because not a lot of people, I did realize that not a lot of people have a range to be able to change through different like personas and like be yeah. incarnate as something else. You have to you have to really like know yourself to go there without it be like I I like I said there, there's a big band right now and girls doing death vocals, but I saw I saw her live and it was just like yeah man I don't know. You know, like, like, yeah. To just it just it didn't it didn't feel like it was like that real to me, man. It felt like, oh. See what I'm saying? It was like one of those situations. I'm not gonna name the band because they're really hard yeah, right now. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. And, and you don't need to like diss somebody to exalt somebody. So, like, I'm just saying, like, with her, I love the mm, fact that you had it yeah. live up there because I believed every single moment of what she was doing. This song's a 9.8 for me. I ah, love... That's exactly what I was going to give it. No 9.8? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then you won't destroy me and rain down upon me with furious anger. I won't break up with you. Okay, I'm at, I'm okay. at a 10. I've always been a 10. You don't want to go with that strange girls? No, I don't. Okay, 9.8. Oh so funny. Yeah, 9.8. This was a really, 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 really good song. Uh, really, really good song. Okay. All right. Well, all right. We have one more for you, dear listener. One more. One more. Uh, and then we will be gone. Uh, shout out but to the band. we're not gone yet. Shout out. Shout out to the uh, Middle Earth gave it a 10. Shout out to the band. That was a really, really good band. Uh, shout out to the drummer. Shout out to the guitarist and the bassist. You guys are yep. badasses. I'm just Shout saying, out to Nathan. This girl, though, is unbelievable. <laughs> She's fucking unbelievable, this woman. All right. Uh, we shall return. Thin out. Three out. Go. Okay. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Commercial break. We shall return. One more song. I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. 
And so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously we can't lie to you so we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just Rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. It shall shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. All yes, dear right. listener. All right. Last song of the night. This is uh. for the band, the epic un uh, band. I'm sorry. This is for the Alliance, the Epic Underground. Shout out to Archero, who heads that up. If you're interested in finding out about that, jump on Patreon. It's a dollar a month. That's the starting point. Yes. And you send me a message, and I will lead you she will to lead where you. you will go. She will also lead you astray. <laughs> yeah, somebody's like, I've been talking with you so much on Patreon. I really want to meet you guys in person. <laughs> I was like, well, where do you live? <laughs> All right, so this is what the Epic Underground has to say. We did a poll named Double Feature, taking two completely opposite subgenres and placing the playlist side by side in two polls at the same time. Hell Ripper, Black Arts, and, and Alchemy, Alchemy was the winner of the speed metal side of the poll. This is a one-man band from Scotland. A one-man band. All right. Do they do they have the lyrics? The name. Alchemy. Alchemy. Yeah, the name of the band is Hell Ripper. Yeah, what's wrong with so, that? I, I don't know. I don't know. Many things, but we'll I leave think, it there. I think uh, Black Arts and Alchemy. I think I found it. The, uh, yep, the and I've got of, the. Here we go. The here disciples, the does it start with the Disciples of Lucifer? Yes, it does. All right, the Disciples yep. of Lucifer. More send us to hell music. Yeah. Shout it to us. We're Christians. <laughs> you can't touch I'll us. I'll tell you. Gone. It's so okay. I've been teaching you. You can't kids. touch us, Shaitan. No. Teaching the babies to do it themselves. Oh, I'm yeah? like, all right, everybody's time now. The, Father, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Aww. And it's so cute watching them do it. I'm like, oh, it's adorable. All right, here we go. Let's go. Shaitan, let's do it.
broke it. Fast moving, yeah, Hell Ripper. Somebody called that blackened speed. Oh, okay. Well, I see the speed slide. That but... makes sense. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, it, it going at that clip made it uh, more palatable for me. This guy, <laughs> this guy is uh, is uh, a monster on guitar. The mm-hmm. Stuff that he was doing. Speed metal is actually easy to play if you have the uh, if you have the really if you have the. Uh, what what word am I looking for? The uh, dexterity. No, the uh, endurance. Oh, to a degree, but there are people that can that 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 can complicate that stuff. You know, he's arpeggiating a chord while he's maintaining it. It's very difficult stuff to do, mm-hmm. like in a legible way that that stuff flows yeah, one to another. Yeah. It's a one man band. I'm not really a fan of one man bands. Because oh, I forgot it was a one man band. Well, one, I, I don't like the concept of like doing like all this stuff on computer. Either. Like I'm either. not, a, I'm not a fan of that. I forgot like, though. I don't, I, you know. But at the same time, at the same time, like it must be incredibly difficult. I'm like trying to get like one of my harmonies right on You're... the thing, <laughs> and it's like it's so frustrating. It's I cannot imagine like start to finish doing that, the drums and all this. Oh like, my god, it would take so long to do one song. Yeah, because I want to get everything like perfect. Like I was talking to the person that's gonna produce this this next song. She's like, "I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm not gonna be nice to you because we're friends." Blah blah blah. And good. Like, I'm like, okay, this is this is great. That's good. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Is, it is good because, but it's it's extreme. Like if anybody's ever like, I sent just, her the message too to say that you wanted to add the synth so you, it wouldn't get. Not forgotten. just playing a song, but but I don't think people realize how difficult it is to actually write a song. So that things flow into each other, and then on top of that, writing no, lyrics really that, that fit that. to get the math right, but at the same time to get your the emotion out, because metal ultimately is about emotion. Like, I don't think people realize that's fucking that's really difficult to do. Mm. Um, and a lot of the stuff, like the I just we just happened on it by accident, like that that that, that <laughs> middle part. I know. I know. That sounds amazing. In my opinion, it sounds amazing. We'll see. But, like, I got that on accident. Mm-hmm. And that that's one of the reasons, like, you record everything and, mm-hmm. and things like that. But, um, so even though, like, I'm not a fan of the, of the, of the one-man band thing, I, at the same time, <clears throat> really respect the hell out of being able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what did you, now? What 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 was it with you? You didn't like the instruments, or you didn't like the vocals, or what? What was the situation? No, it's just you know I'm not like a fan of that type of vocal style, which we all know. Mm-hmm. But because it was, I, it's weird because usually when it's too fast, I'll say, oh, I feel like I'm being pushed down a conveyor belt, and I hate that feeling. Yes. But for some reason, this one made me feel like. <laughs> Okay, so there's sometimes when I cook and I like to just go really slow and just enjoy the entire process. 
Um, but then there are other times where I don't have a lot of time. And if everybody can just get the hell out of my way, I can, I can make that badass meal very fast. Right. And so to me, this was the badass meal really fast. It wasn't sloppy and a big giant mess. That's the thing. It's it was, was like, we are, we're going Is somewhere. Calendras- what? Is Calendras saying that the instruments were real and not digital? Was that in this band the instruments oh, were real he, and not I don't digital? Think he's specifying that. If that's the case, that that, that guy is ridiculously mm-hmm. talented. Holy shit! Yeah. Um. So this is this yeah is, Clay. That's true. What happened? In a one band band, you can do it the way you want. And you don't have to compromise. Yo, it was all real. It was all real. Oh well, I th- okay. I'm well, gonna say that, that changed, changes things. Not. That changes That's a whole horse of a different color, as they say. I've never heard that phrase before. Really? (laughs) That's so... Okay, Uh, because I forgot that it was... Usually it has... Okay, you know, five minutes from now, they could be like, (laughs) we lied to you. It was all on the computer. Right, right, right. Idiots. But I'm telling you, like, usually when it's on a computer, you can kind of feel that vibe. I didn't feel that vibe with this song, and that's why I forgot that that's how it was. And then turns out he did he does all those instruments. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty ridiculous. That's never happened before on the channel, right? We've never done that before, uh, where somebody does all the fucking instruments themselves. I think. I think. Uh, Who? Panopticon, I think we've done a Panopticon one. Uh, Galibrate, I think we did. All the instruments he does himself. Uh, well, I, I'm going by what Kel, Kel, Kel usually knows what the hell he's talking about. Oh he usually knows his stuff, you know, what he's talking about. I, I, like, there there are, like, for example, like, Peter, Peter sent me that guitar thing last year, and he's like, I don't want any alterations. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, fine, no alterations. Like, he's the drummer... But it was a guitar line. He really liked the guitar line, and he's like, he's like, no, I, I want it that way. Like, it depends on like the band. Mm-hmm. And the reason he was like that was because with the with with our song, I was like, nope, nope. Mm-hmm. I was vetoing everything I didn't mm-hmm. like. Um, I vetoed some of my own shit because Jay came out with something, and Jay's <laughs> Jay's Jay's was yeah. better, especially on the chorus line. Mm-hmm. Jay's was better, so I got rid of mine because mm-hmm. it was just better than mine. But. I was, an, I was a complete dick to everybody. I was like, nope, 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 don't like this, don't like that. But everybody kind of understands that I'm a dick anyway. That's my personality. So, like, they're coming to the band knowing that. Whereas, like, especially, like, in Europe, I feel like Europeans are a lot more diplomatic about shit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kai was True. saying, sure, I'll be an evangelical and shoot everybody. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, So, there's like, oh, we have to compromise and all this. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not compromising shit. <laughs> but... Yeah, it, it, I, yeah. But I definitely see, like, if I was in Europe where I did have to compromise, I would want to be in a band by myself. But this guy's doing... How do you even do that? Well, I know... You know what's funny? is like, I play something and, like, I connect it. And I know, I know how it's going to sound. I know it's not going to sound on guitar. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what's going to happen with the drums. So, like, I'm working on this shit. And once, it, once, once Lindsay clears the guitar stuff from top to bottom... Then I'm going to send it off to, you know, homeboy and he's going to add some shit to it. And I know it's going to be great, but I can't hear, I can't hear drumming wise what's happening. This guy, you're telling me that he's able to play this shit and he knows, that means when he's playing, when he's laying down the guitar lines. He hears it all? That he hears everything, including the bass. Wow, you've got to be really in tune with yourself. I don't know. You've got to be really in tune. That's that's pretty crazy. Shout out to him. I don't know. That that that's pretty crazy. Um, lyrically, you know, it's the standard. Oh, we're gonna go to the church, and the devil's gonna take over the church, and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be honest with you, I was really focusing a lot on the lyrics, um, because I was focused on the guitar. Because because he was saying it was a one man one man mm-hmm. band. So I was like, all right, let me see what these guitars are gonna do. This guy's technical as hell. He's really really good. Um, but that is that is something pretty crazy. That. All the instruments are actually real and not digital. That's pretty ridiculous. That's got to affect your score, obviously. Oh, it does. It does. I oh, mean, Michelle, you found a publisher willing to uh, publish your poetry. That's badass. That's really, really good. Yeah, that's really exciting. But but this is like this is one of those like mosh songs 
like mosh. Yeah, like oh, yeah, you know, yeah, getting yeah, people yeah. ready for the pit. You, you know, yeah. like like you know, like when the the band opens up, like the first or second song, like yeah, that you know is like a guaranteed banger is going to get people moving. You know what I'm saying? Like it it it's that kind of yeah. it's that kind of song. Um, so for that note, I'm going to give this an eight dot five. Be honest. Go ahead. Be honest. Let it out. Let's hear it. It got a full point from me because of the the fact that they're all real. Okay, I have to say, this is not my style of music, but I'm going to give this a 9.1 because I, it, okay, it's a 7.2 if he's not a one-man band that did it, like if he did it on the computer, 7.2. If he did all these instruments by himself, then it's a 9.1. He did, though. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well... You're skeptical. I am skeptical. Calendra, show us so proof. Crazy. I, I just show us the proof, Calendra. That. Yeah, that's that's mega talent. That's mm-hmm. that's a different level of talent. Yeah. Only members of the Beatles could do one man band music. Check out the White Album. And Ahmad, uh, coming with the hawk. Four out of ten. All right. Well, uh, I disagree with you, my brother. Uh, D- Dwayne. <laughs> Blaine gave it a 3.2. <laughs> all right, guys. Shout out to all the alliances. Much love to all you beautiful people. We enjoyed it. Shout out shout out to Kayla, by the way. Song of the Night. Song of the Night obviously came mm-hmm. from, uh, uh, was it Witch Mountain is the name of the band? Nighthawk is the name of the song. You yeah. guys should really, really check that out. This shit is real. Like You will not be disappointed. Believe you me. Okay. Um, that's it. Say goodbye to the people.